Happy Halloween, everyone. I'm Matt Mitrich, the alternate historian. For my Halloween episode, I decided to talk about airships. But wait, airships aren't scary, right? From 1896 to 1897, people in the western United States reported sightings of unidentified airships. These mysterious airships were first seen in California, with other sightings moving eastward from there. The first such mystery airship was described as being powered by men pedaling on bicycle pedals, with a passenger compartment underneath and a light on the front. Some witnesses even reported that they heard singing. Other sightings included a witness in Arkansas who claimed to have been told by an alleged airship pilot that his craft was going to Cuba to kill Spaniards with a Hotchkiss gun, which was an early machine gun, during the lead-up to the Spanish-American War. Another witness claimed to have seen an airship with a large clue fly by, but there were at least one passenger under guard and tied to a chair, which is a familiar scenario in your average steampunk adventure. Meanwhile, a later sighting near the end of the craze from Texas also claimed to have seen an airship crash into a windmill, which killed the pilot, whose body was later buried. The wrecked airship was described as being metallic in nature and being covered in strange hieroglyphic figures. If you can believe it though, those stories were the more tame ones that I found. Many witnesses of mystery airships reported seeing occupants who appeared human, but their behavior, mannerisms, and clothing were unusual. For example, a witness who encountered an airship in Texas described an oddly dressed crew who claimed to be descendants of the lost tribe of Israel who had learned English from a 16th century explorer. Meanwhile, another witness reported an airship crashing, and when the witness went to look, they found a man claiming he could shrink his vessel to fit in his pocket. Strange, I know, but where did these airships actually come from? Well, we know from history that there were several functional airships flown before 1896. For example, the inventor Solomon Andrews flew an airship in 1863, and even offered it to the U.S. government for use in the 1861 slavery rebellion, but they sadly never took him up on his offer. Later, in 1885, Arthur Krebs and Charles Reynard successfully flew an electric-powered airship called La France. Mystery airships, however, were described as being larger and faster than those earlier versions, with one story saying an airship traveled 100 miles in 30 minutes. Some were even described as having wings and being powered by electricity, but nearly all stayed aloft thanks to a cigar, egg, or barrel-shaped gas bag. They were so impressive that the governor of Kansas allegedly said he hoped these advanced airships would solve his state's railroad problem. Unfortunately, there is no record of anyone flying a state-of-the-art airship in the United States at the tail end of the 19th century. J. Allen Danilik published a book titled The Great Airship of 1897, in which he argued that there was a human-built airship that briefly flew near San Francisco that was kept secret at first to protect others from stealing the design, before the craft was destroyed for some reason. The test flights could have inspired many of the mystery airship accounts, but since I haven't read the book, I can't comment on how plausible his theory is. That said, had things gone differently, airships may have been named after this inventor and not Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin, but who could this inventor be if they did exist? Mystery airship researchers have put forward a few candidates, including aviation pioneer Lyman Gilmore, who flew a steam-powered airplane in 1902, and Charles Delstrau, an artist who painted airships, and also claimed to be part of a club in California that built an airship using anti-gravity fuel, because holy crap, you can't get more steampunk than those two guys. Even Thomas Edison had to officially deny having anything to do with the airships. Nevertheless, the secret inventor hypothesis sort of falls apart the more you think about it. For one thing, the 1890s weren't exactly an era known for journalistic integrity. Manufactured stories and hoaxes were just as likely to be printed as actual news stories. There were also no independent investigations into the alleged sightings with any of the actual witnesses being interviewed. Researchers into the mystery airships also know that many of the accounts found in newspapers have a tongue-in-cheek tone, and one story even had the author admit he was writing it from inside an insane asylum. Furthermore, in 1886, Jules Verne published his novel, Robard the Conqueror, as it was known in the States, which involves a flying machine causing a panic similar to what the mystery airships did in our timeline. Perhaps the newspaper editors who printed their stories of airship sightings could have been inspired by, or more likely stole from, aspects of Verne's story when trying to draw attention to their own public. Publication. Thus, mystery airships being a hoax is the more plausible, if less interesting, theory. Nevertheless, some have tried to explain mystery airships from a more, mm, cosmic angle. UFOlogists have seen the mystery airships as precursors to modern UFO sightings, and a couple of the reports that I have left out until now do seem to parallel your standard close encounter. For example, one mystery airship report said the crew claimed to be from Mars, although the same witness also claimed they were all nude and didn't speak English. What, does it never get cold on Mars? Another incident also described a metallic airship crewed by slender seven-foot-tall beings who tried to physically force the witness into the ship, which sounds like one of the earliest alien abduction reports. 
And speaking of aliens taking things that aren't theirs, one witness even claimed to see an airship steal one of his cattle, and perhaps one of the first reports of cattle mutilation, although the story was later confirmed to have been concocted by the witness for their liars club. So it does seem that mystery airships fit the current mythology surrounding UFOs. But if we're going to invoke alien space bats, I have a more interesting theory. When researching this video, I had to filter out useful information from a lot of conspiracy theory websites, but one detail from them that caught my eye was the idea of the interdimensional being. You see, some UFOologists claim that UFOs are not spaceships piloted by aliens from other planets, but vessels from other alternate realities piloted by beings who can pierce the barriers between different timelines, like the aliens from Indiana Jones and the King of the Crystal Skull. Ugh. Sorry, saying that movie's name always leaves a bad taste in my mouth. To be honest, it is a clever way to address the problems that arise over crossing the vast distances between stars, because unless aliens have some way to get by the light barrier, any trips to Earth would take decades if not centuries, and it doesn't seem worth it just to probe one drunk redneck. Now, alternate historians deal with parallel timelines all the time, so mystery airships being from another Earth whose history diverged from our own fits well into our worldview. Still, one needs to wonder. What did this Earth do differently that not only gave them advanced airships, but also the ability to traverse the barriers between realities so easily? And why visit our reality in the first place? What do they think of us? Are they still visiting our Earth? If so, what exactly are their plans for it and us? If you're the type of person who can believe we are being visited by advanced human civilization from an alternate timeline with unknown motivations, then such questions might keep you up at night. Unfortunately, I am an agnostic on that final theory on mystery airships. It sounds cool, but it probably was just a hoax all along. Still, if I left a few of you uneasy this Halloween, then I accomplished what I set out to do. Well, that is what to say in the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Bye!